All right, guys, welcome to today's edition of me rambling on for 10 minutes about who gives a fuck what. So, um, nah, today we're going to talk about solitary confinement in the hole. Somebody left a comment yesterday, said he wanted to uh, hear about the hole. So I'm going to go ahead and break that down because there's lots of interesting shit about the hole. So when you think of the hole, what's the first thing you imagine? Me going to jail for the first time, when I heard hole, I thought that shit was going to be like a hole in the ground. Just a hole. You was just in it. You know what I mean? Obviously, not the case. But my 18-year-old mind, I'm thinking worst case scenario for everything, right? So they call it a hole to different things in different states. They call it the shoe, which would be segregated housing. They call it the hole. They call it confinement. They call it the RHU. It really just depends on where you are, what they call it. They call it the box, the bucket. You know what I mean? It really just depends. But basically, the best way to describe it is if you went to jail while you were in jail already, okay? Okay. So basically, it's an entire block by itself, right? In most jails. In Pennsylvania, it's, a, it's an entire block. Normally, I think it's H block is normally the block that it is. But it doesn't matter. It's like up towards intake and shit. But basically, you do anything wrong while you're there, that's like low-key serious. They send you there to confinement. So they call it solitary confinement. But in most states, you actually do have a cellmate while you're in there. So it's solitary, but it's not really... It's not really solitary because you're in there with somebody else. So imagine a normal cell in prison. You have in Pennsylvania, you have your bunk, you have a desk, your toilet sink, you have two two stools like that are attached to the to the desk. You have your TV, lockers, foot locker, keyboard, whatever you got, tablet, all that shit, right? In the hole, you don't get none of that shit. Okay? You have one stool, you have your bunks, you have a bed, and you have the sink. That's it. You don't get no TV. None of that shit, right? Which, like, why would you? You're in confinement for, you know, getting in trouble. So, everybody knows, like, certain shit that would send you to the hole. Fighting, drugs, weapons, all the typical stuff. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of different little things that people get sent to the hole for that really don't make much sense. But we'll get into that. But, basically, you come to the hole. The first thing they do is stick you in this plexiglass tank by yourself. So they can completely see it. You got to strip search and hand your stuff through the wicket. If anybody doesn't know what a wicket is, that's the hole on your cell door that they unlock and open to put trays through. It's called a wicket. Um, or a slot, whatever. You know what I mean? Every state's different. That's what you guys got to keep in mind. Well, uh... Oh, I lost my train of thought. That fucking sucks. Um, wicket... Oh, okay, so you hand your clothes through the wicket, right? They hand you in a jumpsuit. Put the jumpsuit on. You gotta stick your hands through the wicket. Behind your back, they cuff you up through the door. Open the door, now you're cuffed. They walk you to the cell, put you in. Same drill. Open the wicket. Close the door around your hands so that your hand's in the hole. Unlock you. Now you're, you know, free. But you're just in this cell that's in the hole. So, you get nothing in the hole. You get books. That's it. You don't get no commissary. You don't get no tobacco. Well, you don't get tobacco in PA prisons now anyway. Since I came home, they stopped that. Um, you don't get your TV, tablet, none of that shit. You can get whatever books or magazines you have in your property, which a lot of people don't really have any in their property. Me, I always had them just because my, I like to read and my mom would always send me books and stuff. But a lot of times, like, you don't have shit. But now, if you go to the hole, for instance, if I go to the hole and my cellie's in the cell, they'll tell him to pack my stuff up. So he'll stick whatever books in there or whatever, you know what I mean? He'll put tobacco in there because there's different ways of doing stuff in there, you know what I mean? But they're all hip to that shit now, so you can't really do it like that anymore. But you get one hour out of your cell a day, okay? But it's not like you think. That one, that one hour is Monday through Friday, but you get showers every other day. So you'll get showers... Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then the next week you'll get them Tuesday, Thursday, and that's it, right? So they're not letting you get showers like that. One, once you get out the shower, they'll put you into the you know into the cage. So basically, it's just like a chain link cage, entire box around you. There's nobody else in there unless you have a celly. Then your celly would also be in there, but it's literally like the worst place that you can be. Like prison is a bad place to be. The hole is like the worst place that you can be in jail. So it's literally one of the worst places that you can be anywhere, in my opinion. But it's not the physical being in the hole that's hard. It's that fucking mental stuff, man. You start to go so crazy in there. 
because you have you're not seeing anything happening. You don't know what's going on on the outside, whether it be in the prison or on the street. You you know nothing. You're not getting on the phone. You're getting visits through through the glass, non-contact visits. Normally in population, you get regular visits. So you're not getting none of that. So you really are isolated from the world. Like that's that's 100% a fact. You are in isolation. You get mail, but they fuck with it all the time. You'll get it a week later, two weeks later. Like, because they, they don't give a shit. Like, they don't have to do anything. You know what I mean? You're in a fucking hole. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. They'll just talk shit through the door. And you start to get this, like, you know, very weird mentality where you're very, very, like, you're already against the CEOs and against, like, you know, the establishment and everything. But when you're in there, Ooh, it takes on a whole different life, man. It really does. Next thing you know, CEO's walking by asking, how's your day? Like, Fuck you, bro. I hope you die. Like, damn, bro. Like, you didn't have to be all that. But a lot of times, like, you carry that into your population once you get back out the hole. Like, and they'll, Pennsylvania, they do whatever they want. They'll lock you up for investigation, right? Basically, they could think you're doing something. They don't got no proof. They don't got no evidence. But they just lock you up in the hole anyway until they can prove if you did anything or not. Which is you know, kind of fucking crazy because they're already trying to say solitary confinement is inhumane anyway and it doesn't really work as a punishment and it really doesn't. Most people that get out of the hole go back. Like, they literally call people that go to the hole frequent flyers in Pennsylvania because they know the motherfuckers is going right back because they can't handle themselves in population. It got so bad to the point where people were doing so much time in the hole before they came home, they were letting them out the hole just to try to let them integrate into society, which would be the actual prison just so that they didn't act like crazy as fuck when they went home. You know what I mean? But you see it all the time. People that have been in there way too long. There was this dude. His name was Gary T. I don't know if he's out now. He should be. He had 30-year sentence. But he'd been in the hole for like 27 years. And this was like 2014, 15. So he should be home now unless he caught like another. He'd been in the hole the whole sentence. His whole sentence. This dude was shot out. But like what do you expect? You take somebody away from life for that long you know what i mean like it's one thing to be in prison you're walking around with other people even with the life sentence, you're walking around with other people people on death row in pennsylvania get more privileges than people in a hole when you're on death row you still get your tv your tablet all that you get day room with the other death row people you're not just locked down 23 and one in pennsylvania on death row but you are when you're in the hole so it's just it's crazy like damn like we have less privileges than the people that y'all sentenced to death like, bro, come on. That don't really make any sense. But um, the longest time I served in the hole, like when I was in the county jail, I went to the hole all the time because like I was 18 and like trying to prove myself. So like I kept fighting because like I'm not gonna let nobody play me. I'm 18 years old. Like you're not gonna play me. Like I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna show you I'll stand up for myself. And it was what it was. When I went upstate, I really chilled out though because once you get upstate, like the shit you do in the county doesn't affect you coming home from prison. So you can have a million write-ups in the county for fighting. Once you go to prison, it's like that slate is wiped clean. So now it's like, okay, I can do my time. And you already made a name for yourself. So it doesn't really matter because it's like, oh, it, it follows you by word of mouth, but doesn't follow you on a paper trail. So you can't really get in trouble for nothing you do in the county jail. But like I said, this is also only in Pennsylvania. I can't speak for every prison in every state because I haven't been to every prison in every state. And I'll never be at a prison again, so it doesn't even matter. But it just becomes one of the things where you really just like realize like, okay, like I'm not trying to keep drawing and getting in trouble. Like the, all the write-ups I had while I was upstate in prison were for arguing with the CO. I got two for arguing with the CO. They gave me one for breaking cell restriction while I was on that write-up. Cause I didn't even go to the hole for that. Cause it wasn't even anything serious. Um, an investigation for six months for a drug rap and they literally couldn't prove shit. They just sat 14 people down until they figured something out. And when they didn't, they just let everybody out because they don't give a fuck. They're just trying to combat the problems that they have in the jail. But um, then I went for the tattoo motor. But the tattoo motor wasn't really why I went to the hole. They found the tattoo motor after they took us to the hole. My celly was a fucking draw box and was fucking selling work. And like a couple months before I came home, uh, he was a gang member and shit. I'm not going to mention no fucking affiliation because it don't matter. But um. He was just fucking drawing, so they came and locked us up because he was drawing, and then they found the tattoo motor, gave me a write-up for that, let us out of, off the investigation, but gave me cell restriction for the motor, which is why I didn't come home originally the first time when I was supposed to, because I was supposed to re be released four months before I actually came home. My minimum was seven years. I did seven years in four months. That four months was a parole hit, um, but it just becomes one of them things where you really just get used to the way shit is. Like, you go to the hole, and like you're like, oh, I've been here. Like, it ain't nothing. Like, 
but it still does fuck with you. But it's cool. Like, it's not cool. But, like, people do different things to, like, stay entertained. Like, because everybody gets cool while they're in the hole. Like, you'll have rival gang people talking. The people that, the person that you just went to the hole for fighting, you guys are on the gate talking all day and shit. Like, because you guys are all locked in there together. You got motherfuckers making family feud games and Monopoly and all sorts of shit. You're playing chess through the door, calling out what square to move to. Like, it, it's a whole world of its own. You know what I mean? And I didn't even get into the whole fishing thing. I'll have to make a whole video about fishing because that's all like a whole different thing in itself. But that's mainly in the whole. But you know what I realized while making this video? I really can talk. Like, I can talk. For a long ass time. I did not realize it's already been this long. It's already been 11 minutes almost. Like, damn, bro. If anything, that's the most reason that I have any sort of following is because I can fucking entertain people with words. Like, that shit's harder than anything else, man. I swear. But listen, I hope y'all have a good day. Live streaming on Twitch today about two, three hours. For about two, three hours. Um, I'm going to also be on TikTok. You guys, come on. You guys already know. Um, But yeah, fucking... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess just have a good day. I was going to go into a little another rant, but I'm not trying to take up y'all time. I'll rant later on. But all right, guys, I appreciate y'all. Sorry for the long, drawn-out shit.